Okay then, so now we've got a Next.js app up and running and we've set up a bit of config for Shard CN UI. Now we can start adding some different components. Now to begin with, I want to take a look at the card component, but before we do that, I just want to go through a little bit of prep work. So what I'd like to do is fetch some data for some recipes and then we'll display each one of those recipes on this page inside a card component. And the recipe data we're going to fetch is stored inside a data folder I've already created inside a db.json file. So inside this file, we've got nine recipe objects in total, each one with a different ID, a title, an image path, a time property, a description, and a vegan flag to say whether or not the recipe is vegan. Now we're gonna fetch all this data using JSON server, which you can install globally by typing npm install, then a hyphen G to install it globally, and then JSON hyphen server. Once you've done that, we can then use it to tell it to serve up our data by typing JSON hyphen server and then the watch flag, so double dash watch, then a path to the file we wanna watch, which is dot forward slash underscore data and then a forward slash again and then db.json. And then after that, another flag, double dash port to say we wanna run this on port 4000 because React or rather Next.js is using port 3000. And what this does is wrap the data in an API and it serves it on port 4000 for us. So we can fetch it using this endpoint that it generates right here. So that's how we're gonna fetch the data that we need. Next up, we wanna fetch the data inside the homepage. So first, I'm gonna paste in a new interface which describes that data so we can get some auto completion going. And the properties here match the JSON data exactly. Next, I'm going to paste in a function to fetch the data called get recipes, which fetches that data, that JSON data, and it returns it. And we can see that return type here, where we say it returns a promise that when resolved will be an array of recipes. So now we can use that recipe data in the component itself by first of all marking the component as an async component. So we can use await inside it. And then within it, we can invoke that get recipes function and store the recipes inside this recipes constant. So now we can iterate those recipes inside the component and we can output some template for each one. To do that, I'll make a div to begin with, with some Tailwind classes. So the first one is grid to set the display to grid, then grid hyphen calls hyphen three to make a grid of three columns in total, and then gap hyphen eight to apply a gap between the grid items. So inside the div, I'll take the recipes and we then want to map through them. So for each recipe, we're going to fire a function. And for each recipe, we return a little bit of template. And this is where we're going to output a card component using Shard CN. All right, so if we come to the docs now and then go to components and then scroll down here, we should see the card component. So it gives us an example of what the card looks like. We can toggle the different styles here as well. They're not too different to be honest. But if we scroll down, we can see right here, this is how we add the card component to our project. So we use this shard CN UI CLI again. And we're just using this add command and then whatever component we want to add. So I'm gonna copy that. But then if we scroll down here, you can see all the different things that we can import from the card component. So the card itself, card content, card description, card footer, etc. So these are all the components we're gonna use and this is basically how we're gonna structure it. So we have the card, then inside that a header, inside that a title, potentially a description as well. We have the card content and a footer. So let's go back up here. I think I already copied it, but let's do it again for good measure. And now we can go and add this card component in our project. All right then, so let's open up a terminal and go to a new terminal. Yep, because we need those two. And then we'll just paste in that command. So npx shard cn ui at latest add card. And when we run this, it's going to create that component for us. And it's going to pop it inside the components folder that it created for us when we first set up the application. So you can see right here it's done. Now it's created a UI folder inside here and it's put in a card.tsx file. So this is the card component. And if we scroll down here, you can see Here's all the exports. So this is what we can import in our components from the card component. All right, so let's go back over here and let's start to flesh out this card component. 
So the first thing we want to do is import a load of different things from that file. So I'm going to just paste those in right at the top up here. And I'm basically importing all of the things because we're going to use all of them. And then down here, we will do our card component. Now we need to give this a key prop because when we're mapping through some things, we need to give each element that we output, each parent element, a unique key. So the key is going to be equal to the recipe ID because each one of these things has a unique ID. All right. So that's the card itself. Now we are going to apply some classes to this and we can do this to different components generated by Shard CN. We can apply classes, Tailwind classes to it to kind of override some of the default styles, if you like. In fact, we'll do that later on. Let's just focus on making the component, then we'll add the extra styles. All right. So inside here, we will have a card header components and inside the card header is where we put the card title and the card description. Now what I'm going to do is place these inside a div and this is a stylistic choice so that later on we can display this as flex and there might be something else after the div. So that's purely stylistic. You don't have to do this. So we'll do the card title inside here and the card title is going to be the recipe title. So recipe dot title. And then below that, we'll do a card description. So the card description is basically like a really small amount of text below the title, but before the main body of the card. So the card description inside that, I want to output the length of time it takes to cook. So we'll say recipe dot time, and then I'll put mince to cook after it. All right. So that might be like 30 minutes to cook or something. So that's the card header for now. Next, we'll do card contents. So card content like so. And this is the main content of the card. So I want to put the description right here inside that. Let's do a P tag for it and then say recipe dot description. OK, and that will do for the card content. Finally, I'm going to do a card footer. So card footer. And then inside that, I'm going to output two things. First of all, just a button. And that button is going to say something like view recipe. So in a real application, I'll probably send this to a recipe details page or something like that. And then below the button, I'm going to output a message to say whether this recipe is vegan or not using this vegan flag. So we're going to basically conditionally output a message if it is vegan, if this is true. So to do that, we will say recipe dot vegan and then double ampersand and then a P tag. And then inside that P tag, we will say vegan. So now this on the right is only going to be output if this is true. So we have a little P tag that says, yeah, this is vegan. All right, awesome. And that is the card pretty much complete. So now we've used all of these different parts of the component. We have the card wrapping everything, then a card header inside that a card title and description, then the card content, and then finally a card footer. So let's preview this now in a browser. All right, and there we have it, all these different cards, each one with a different recipe. So we have the card header at the top with the title and description. This is the description. Then we have the card content, and then at the bottom we have the card footer. And inside the card footer, we have vegan in just some of them, which are vegan. Awesome. Now, a few minutes ago, I said that we could apply our own Tailwind classes to these components, and Shard CN allows us to do that. And all it does is kind of override the styles a bit or add to the styles. So what I'd like to do is just add a few simple styles for the layout, really. And that is to make it so that all these buttons, these view recipe buttons, all sit at the bottom. You see this one here is higher than this one. And that's purely because the content here is a bit longer than this. So I'm just going to add a few Tailwind classes to kind of rectify this. All right, then. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to the card itself and apply some classes to this. So class name is equal to something. And I'm going to paste these in. So flex. And then flex call specifies the direction of the flex to be in the column direction up and down instead of left and right and then justify between. So what that's going to do is take the header, the content and the footer and basically put equal space between them. And that means that the buttons are all going to go to the very bottom of the card. So they'll all be level from card to card. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is apply some classes to the card header. So let me just paste these in. And we have flex row right here to specify the direction of flex is now the row gap four and then items center. Now this is really styles for later on because later we're going to put an avatar right here, probably in the next lesson. So it's styles for that up against this div. 
And then finally, I also want to apply some classes to the card footer down here. So let me paste those in as well. So we have flex and then justify between. And that's because we have then the button on the right. And then this will skew way over. Sorry, this is on the left. This should skew way over to the right. So let's save this and see if it looks any better. All right. And now if I refresh over here, hopefully, yep, we can see now the buttons are all at the bottom. They're all level with each other. And also this thing, the vegan thing has gone way over to the right as well. So that looks a bit better. Cool. So looking pretty nice. That's our first component, the card component. In the next lesson, we're going to try using some more components. We're going to use the avatar component for a little image of each recipe. We're going to use the button component to make this look better. And also a badge component for this thing over here.